Hi, I'm sure that everyone, including myself, will be pleased to know that this is Lecture 30. <laughs> it's going to cover handrails, barriers and headroom. So we're really talking about safety around stairs and level changes. The design of safety features around stairs and changes in level is an important aspect of how we use a building. We don't go up and down stairs without barriers or handrails or anything to stop us falling off the site, so we expect them. So handrails provide stability, can stop us from falling off, barriers prevent accidental falls from height, and a minimum headroom stops us from banging our heads as we go down the stairs. So this lecture is going to discuss some of these safety issues and look at the minimum dimensions required to satisfy the building regulations in Scotland. So in the Scottish building regulations, we have regulation 4.3.14, which governs handrails to stairs and ramps. Basically what it says is that you need a handrail to both sides of any flight where there's a change in level of more than 600 millimetres. So this doesn't necessarily have to be a stair. It can be external, so it could be on a patio looking over a garden, but handrails can be admitted to a flight or ramp serving a single dwelling where the change in level is less than 600 millimetres. So if it's more than 600, we need them. Less than 600, we don't. When we're going up and down stairs, we have a minimum height that's required to stop you banging your head. It's probably more to do with going downstairs. If you think about how you move downstairs, you kind of bounce on the, the soles of your feet. So you're slightly taller than you, you normally are. So it's quite easy for somebody who's six feet to to sort of hit their head on something that's uh, taller than that. And uh, I have actually banged my head on something protruding from the bottom of the stairs and it is very sore and very surprising. So what the building regulations require is a height of at least two metres. That is required at the top of the stairs, the bottom of the stairs and all the way down. So that's an at least measurement. So the, the ceiling can vary as long as it's more than two metres above the, the, the line of the slope of the stair. And that needs to be over the whole width of the stair. So you can't have one side of the stair having two metres headroom and the other side having only uh, 1.8. So when we install handrails to a stair, we're putting them there so that people can steady themselves as they ascend and descend. For most stairs outside of buildings, we, we would expect to see handrails on either side of the stair. For a private stair, you need only provide a handrail on one side. And if you think back to the previous lecture on stairs, the effective width is governed between the handrail. So you have to consider how much the handrail pokes into the stair while you're designing it. And there's height measurements that govern handrails. And in this case, it's a minimum and a maximum. So it's at least 840 millimetres and no more than 1,000 millimetres above the pitch line. And this helps you actually as that levels out at the top of the stairs. So you could have a, a handrail that's consistent for the whole flight at 900 millimetres. And you may find that actually it needs to be slightly higher or slightly lower to be able to get it leveled out as we reach the bottom of the stairs. And normally for non-private stairs, we would be expecting to extend the top and bottom handrails by 300 millimetres past the end nosings. Now a simple handrail tends to be fixed back to the wall by means of a bracket. These brackets extend the rail from the surface of the wall and provide a comfortable space for gripping the rail. And what we're trying to design here is a space big enough that you can get your knuckles alongside without scraping them in the wall. And the handrail should be of a size that is um, big enough that it feels comfortable in the hand it's not too small that it makes it feel that it's not going to give you the support and it's not so big that you can't feel that you get your hand around it which would give you the opposite problem. And we can consider barriers as distinct from handrails so we don't have to actually have a handrail on top of a barrier. We can have a taller barrier and then a handrail set against that. Barriers are provided to stop falls from height whereas handrails are really for support for the user as they're ascending and descending stairs. The heights for barriers tend to coincide with the heights for handrails so the minimum height there on a stair, stair within a house is 840 millimetres, which is the lowest height for a handrail. But effectively, our barrier can be much higher than that. And there are different situations within a building where we would use different heights of barriers. So for instance, in front of an openable window, the regulations say 800 millimetres, but from practice, it's always 1100. To a change in level within a house, it, the minimum would be 900, and a stair outside a house would be 900 also. 
And when we design barriers, we are usually buying them from specialist subcontractors or they're being designed by the design team, which is the, the architect for aesthetics and materials and the engineer for rigidity and structure. Building regulations dictate certain things about them, but common sense comes into play when we're designing a barrier as well. A barrier needs to be strong enough that if we lean against it or run against it, that it's not going to separate from the floor that's supporting it. So the junction between the two has to be quite robust. The design of a barrier should also prevent people, especially children, from climbing the barrier. We see quite a lot of times where there's horizontal railings, and really that's a quite a dangerous thing because young children like to climb things and when you've got a big drop in level from one side to the next and the barrier is the thing that's meant to protect you you don't want to make it easier or more appealing for them to to actually put themselves into a dangerous situation likewise gaps between balustrades or wires or whatever you're building your barrier out of there should be no gaps larger than 100 millimeters now their building regulations actually say to stop a 100 millimeter sphere from passing through. But really this is to stop very young children from being able to put their head through. And if they can get their head through, they can get their body through and uh, that could be very dangerous. So a couple of key points to note. We need headroom uh, over the width of the stair and the minimum height for that headroom is two meters. We need handrails and these should, should be positioned at between 840 millimeters and 1000 millimeters above the pitch line of the stair. Barriers should be provided wherever there's a change in level greater than 600 millimetres, and the minimum heights depend on the locations. Barriers should also be strong enough to withstand impact and should be designed to prevent climbing. And gaps in barriers should be smaller than 100 millimetres to prevent very young children from falling through. Okay, thanks very much for listening, and be sure to review the other videos in this lecture series and the other videos that we have on drawing and uh, detailing. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye.